Greetings everyone, and great here for another HPARS 3 replay. Spell on the bottom right side as the red Brits, we have Global Roan 36. Spell on top left side as the blue Iroquois, we have Horizon God 1, 2, 3, 4. Does convert the Marauding Musketeer and steals his Mosaic, yes. or donated it. And now start gunning down the local doggo as the ATF wanted. And steal his... German Dipic of a person of wings. An angel? Is that a German depiction of an angel? Red does take the asparagus. And a mana going on up. Two mana is going on up, which will give the British player a couple more villagers. Does gun down that man to seal his mosaic. When it comes to the map, we got the House of Hasbergs. Can give you some funny looking mounted infantry and line infantry. And down here, we've got the House of Witten, which can give you access to the Trabants and Saxon Cossier and the Age 2 Fort. Shipment of villagers being brought in by the Iroquois. We got the beginner deck, which gave access to villagers, high chief, exotic hardwoods, villagers, wood, all resources, town destroyer, Enna's tomahawks, canyon horsemen, all resources, forest prowlers, tomahawks, Travis's, Odonai Shone woodworking, renegade French, renegade Dutch, infinite all resources, forest prowlers, tomahawks, light cannon, Heavy Fortifications, Renegade French, Renegade Dutch, and Infinite uh, Covenant Chain. Ships two heavy cannons and a number of mercenaries from the British Isle. That's actually quite a bit. That is 35 population for 2,000 coin. Two heavy cannon, three Harkopus, four Highlanders, four Irish Brigadiers. That's all mercenaries. Another local doggo will be filled off, and he will seal his asparagus. Commandment. Sir Barnabas Billington. Definitely a British name. And now he's aging up to the governor. And while the Iroquois is messaging to the aging up to the messenger. The message is attack. Does have 14 villagers versus 18. <clears throat> Looks like he's starting to convert uh, something over here. He converts himself a gunman. And he will kill the other gunman and steal his exhausted carrier pigeon. Instead of uh, using it as to carry news, he's just going to eat it for 90 food. British Manor being proxied by a war hut. I am not sure why there's a manor right there, but there is, of course, now a war hut going on up. The British explorer is going to try to stop it, but we do have a gunman to stop him and a plague doctor. Marauding Musketeer is also moving around. The Plague Doctor does have 12 damage and attack. Does snipe the Marauding Musketeer who had like a 20 damage attack. The Gunman, however, does have a 36 damage attack, which actually is pretty good. The Bridge Explorer looks like will go down. Warhut firing away. And Warhut claims the kill. Bilger is trying to bash the Plague Doctor's face in, which does do... 90% less damage to villagers. And he does manage to get the wall off here. He also got a community plaza here. He may be on for he has town destroyer. He has researched town destroyer, so now his uh explorer has a massive siege damage of 232 damage. He's trying to bash this outpost wagon in, but it can still be uh, start to build. 
has taken quite a bit of damage. Not sure where he's planning to set it on up. He's got to deploy it soon before he loses it. The Explorer does go down, does build it in, in time. We've got Musketeers there, it does take out those units. Do we see the... He may need Groove do the Revival Dance. He is going for experience. Onion Horsemen now being pulled on out, as was well around Tomahawks. The gunman does get gunned down. After all, the good guy with a gun stops the bad man with a gun. We also got the Haudenosaunee scouting party there, getting around a musket, uh, not musketeers, tomahawks. So now he has eight tomahawks ready to push on forward with a shipment of kind horsemen on the way. Explorer, British Explorer does get revived, but he is slowly being picked off by the war hut. And then we'll probably get tomahawked as well. Musketeer is going to take time, fire some shrouds over the wall, gets a good volley there on the tomahawks. They do cost a have 150 health, they do cost 95 resources, plus the musketeers, 150 health, and 100 resources. 23 damage versus 19 damage, so the musketeers are just simply superior. <clears throat> superior and only cost 5 extra resources. The Tomahawk's melee damage may be a little bit higher. We now got a shim of Anna Archers with another round of Tomahawks from Floating Field. The war hut of the war chief is now trying to be recovered. Has been recovered, I should say. So this outpost will not last all too long with this absurd torch damage. Musketeers providing some good fire support. Another round of Musketeers. British Musketeers, some red coats. Horsemen push way forward. Do the horsemen have gone down? 14 damage versus 13 damage melee, so the musketeers have slightly worse melee attack, but the guns are better than Tomahawks. Mountain now getting torched down by the war chief. Anna Archers are pushing forward. They are a good skirmisher unit, they have full times 2 damage. For light infantry unit, they also only cost food, 100 food, damage is 12 of a high of double attack speed, which is actually a pretty good uh, skirmisher, especially in this age. The war chief has been knocked out once again. Some of these villagers are getting hit by some tomahawks, and we've got a round of long bowmen as well. They have only plus 25% damage, like crossbows. They have 16 and 22 range, which is pretty good, versus 12 damage and 16 range. The so longbowmen are overall generally better in base performance. Their cost is 100. <coughs> we got all resources being brought on in. And the war chief has been recovered. More British one woman on the field. Right now, the British player has 23 villagers versus uh, 9 or 18. War Chief can make short work at this house. British player has plenty of spare housing space for additional units. Looks like no more military shipments he can bring on in while his opponent still bring another round of tomahawks. Longbones gain some damage on the Anna Archer. This long moment looks like it will go down. Lucy Bear managed to escape on out of there, going for a round of Tanya Horsemen and more Anna Archers. 
Oh, here, just got some musketeers for the British. Damage here going for the town militia. Town militia has been pulled in the field. Tiny horsemen pushing my four, gain some damage. Never seen quite a bit of damage there. Horsemen slowing little down by these various forces. Long bowmen throwing some rounds into the horsemen, and it looks like red has held. And archers are seeing a bit of damage there. Good number of British forces between forward. The militia are down to one health each. And the, all the militia are still alive, so they do offer a decent amount of fire support there. The warhead may want to take time to finish off the militia. <laughs> Warhawk to receive a bit of damage there. More musketeers been brought in and a shimmer coin. Go for some horsemen. And also go for spice trade. Horsemen up and down south. Got a round of musketeers to intercept. Some decent damage from the horsemen. Village can go inside the town center. Does get good volley there. Does bring up his war chief once again. Starting to abandon this region there. The British player has plenty of units on the field. Right now the British player has a seven, roughly fifty population on the field. Most opponents about eight or seven on the field is not too significant. You know, a large number of military structures as well. Has plenty of food right now for more Anna archers. Need a lot more wood to get out some war huts. Go for run hussars now. The shipment of wood he needs in order to get multiple war huts building. There's a shipment of wood. Got around the hussars there. Picks off a couple of these villagers. We got a pair of tribal markets here. More villagers right here as well, so the Air Force is going to lose some more villagers. I got the Scots uh, Team Scots Guards or Team Grenadiers Guards now being deployed on the field, increasing the hit points of his Musketeers and Grenades. These counting horsemen will be picked off by these hussars. Another war hut going on up. And more of these villagers going on down. The air corps can now age up. He's going for the elder. 
This may not be fast enough. He says Warhot built. And he has no resource to pull out anything else on the field. Warhot does get completed. It won't be able to do much here. <laughs> Siphons off a couple of villagers head down south for some odd reason. And the rest of these forces are already cool, so can be cleaned on up. First play is also aging up to the bishop that will move diagonally a little bit better. And it has a shipment available. Anything that could be good, decent. He could uh, save this up the next age. I right, for the Falconets. The Iroquois evacuating some of the villagers there, so keeping 10 set town center so he can start firing away. Long bowmen are not exactly great siege damage dealers. Musketeers are average. Evacuating the villagers in every single direction. You may actually deny the age up. It's getting pretty close, but looks like the age up will be denied. Okay. Azars do find some villagers here, and it looks like it's going to be just hunting down his opponent across the entire map. Right, go for tribal market here. Tribal markets are of course free. Oh, no. oh, no. And I think the air core players just gonna pl be stubborn not back of the game. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit because it looks like the game's just pretty much over. The war chief has been brought back up. She does have good torch damage. Must care to find some stuff up here. There's only six bills remaining. Yeah, this game's pretty much over. Fast forward a little bit more. And it looks like the airport player finally backs out of the game. This anchor is saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.